Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskey. And today I'm in Ireland with the Dunvilles Very Old Old Irish Whiskey PX 12 year old. My video number 42, almost exactly a year ago, um, actually did PX 10-year-old, um, but I was on the Irish Whiskey Trail. I made it my own, and I actually went here to the Ech Echlinville Distillery in Northern Ireland, about an hour outside of Belfast. I did the tour, and I bought this whiskey at the gift shop for 75 pounds which translates into 86 euros, which translates into about $95 for this 12-year-old um, Irish whiskey. Very rare 12-year-old. 46% um, non-chilled filtered. And the 10-year-old, which I'm going to compare it to, has won many different awards, maybe even rightly so. Now, um, uh, at the bar, I was given the little vouchers, and I handed in all four vouchers, and I, I filled up my little bottle here with the 10-year-old. And I must admit, the 10-year-old tastes today a little bit better. Um, it tastes better than I remember. Now, there's two possibilities. Possibility number one, and I think that is a likely possibility, is um, the very first release um, of Dunville was a very rare 40% edition. And that was to say the least, not very good. Then they came out in 2016 with the 10-year-old release of the Dunville Very Rare at 46% non-chilled filtered. And now, 2018, two years later, they have the 12-year-old. So what they did is they bought some juice, some barrels, some ex-bourbon barrels filled with uh, double distilled, and that's very, very important, um, Irish whis whiskey. And they let it set for a little while. They finish it for about a year in their own PX um, butts at the warehouse at um, Echlinville. And then they just waited the two years and filled it up again and had hopefully better barrels, which I think I'm going to be able to test here. Now, my theory was that there were certain batches of the 10-year-old. And I think the very first um, release that I had was, or the very first um, video that I did a year ago was the maybe one of the first batches of the 10-year-old because this is much better. Now, the second possibility could be and might actually also include a combination of the two is I've developed my taste buds. Uh, <laughs> I remember tasting at a 46 and going, oh, it's just so sharp and it's so peppery and it's so strong. I put some water in it down to 43% and it just opened it up and I was like, oh, this is beautiful. And I remember asking the questions, why didn't they just, just put a bottle at 43%? Of course they didn't do it at 43% because I wanted to have a non chilled filtered. And I was back then a newbie, and now I'm a intermediate, and one day I will be advanced and professional and expert. But I'm on my journey, and it's being documented here online, uh, live um, with you. So we're just going to smell the 10-year-old, which has a very nice Irish whiskey, um, PX Pedro Geminis, sherry, a cask. Oh, it's so much better. Wow. Mmm, and this is actually what the tour guy said as well. It's so much better um, And it's really a step up and I must admit he is right Peter. Thank you very much So let's try this Mmm, mmm, mmm The sherry influence is very strong very dominant now the problem is it's almost it's just starting to tip um it's almost too much woodiness at the end it's almost too much of that old oak casks at the end but it's it, they caught it before it got bad um now i go back to the 10 year old mm-hmm mm. brighter fruitier Milk chocolate. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word. More milk chocolate. 
and the wood is absolutely perfect. There's a deep, dark, rich oakiness, woodiness about this, which is just perfect. And it hasn't even started to reach that tipping point yet. Um, this has won awards, rightfully so. Um, now that I'm at the position I'm at, as well as my conspiracy theory, um, that it's more that's now the second batch and they have a little bit better of barrels. Now, the one thing you should remember is whiskey is 60 to 80 percent wood. Now, my English speaking people here are probably often bourbon drinkers. And we know that the wood is basically the char. Is it a toasted char two? Is it not toasted and char five, four or five? And that's what we can work with because it's always going to be white oak. It's probably going to be Missouri, Arkansas white oak. It might be from the south um, slope of, a, of the hill. But other than that, it's still the same. Now, um, over here in Europe with our Scotch and with our Irish, we have to reuse those casks that usually someone else has used before us. And it's so important to get the best possible wood, especially when we're talking about our fortified wines, our sherries, our ports, our rums, our Madeiras, our Moscatels, our Sautan, our um, Mazala, and, 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 and. Um, those casks are so critical to the, um, to the success of that whiskey. And here they actually have very, very good casks. Well done. Here as well, the 10-year-old with a year-old finish in those sherry casks, 12-year-old, so this 9 plus 1, this 11 plus 1, um, or even a little bit more, I'm not really sure. They have, there's no information online about this whatsoever. It's only at the gift shop, and that was really, really the problem. And I didn't I didn't realize it at the moment. I should have asked more questions about this before I'm bringing it back home. So, just a couple drops of water, and then um, we're going to give it our grade. Hmm, that wasn't enough. <laughs> I was being a little bit too too stingy with myself here. All right, so now I'll put a little bit of a couple drops in here. It is good. It does come into more of a milk chocolate chocolateness um, towards the end with that, also with the water there. I like the the label, the ret retro. Actually, when um, Shane um, Braniff bought the. Um, the, received the license in June 2013 to create his own distillery. It's not that long ago. I mean, five years ago. He also um, bought the rights of this old, old brand, and he revitalized. He re re, re he re re, re he re released this brand, um, which is not always something that I prefer. For example, we have DWD, um, which I did not like because they don't have their own distillery. They're just buying up old brands and then using those brands in order to um, have some type of link to a heritage which really isn't there. At least with Dunville, there's a little bit of a heritage also with a global region there. And he will one day, that's at least what I've read about Shane, one day have his own distil distillate. Uh, distillate which will be 10 to 12 years old and he will continue to use this brand continue to use this px as well as other things oh by the way the people in america actually do know the um echlinville Ech brand fecken one of the worst whiskies i've ever had if you've ever seen the fecken f-e-c-k-i-n irish whiskey cheap as dirt and terrible um there behind it and when I was doing going through the warehouse, there was one little corner with one little pallet full of the whiskey, but that wouldn't have been enough to even think about distributing over to the States. Um, but yes, they were the ones that produce it, <laughs> and they, it was a hit. And I think the name had a lot to do with it rather than the quality of the liquid of the liquor. Hmm. Fabulous. A minus. A minus minus, but still it's an A minus. I do not often give A minuses, A's at all. This is really, really nice stuff. Now, um, 86 euros, $95, this is like a C minus. Now, in my book, A is fantastic, you'll get it, whatever you can do. B, hey, you should have it. Um, C, 
go buy it if you want. D, don't have to buy it. And um, F, why was it at, at, produced at all? And a C minus actually means if you can get your hands on it at an A minus for the quality, why not? This is really, really, really nice juice. All right, so my question of the day is, um, what is your fav favorite whiskey from Northern Ireland? Ooh, think about this. Northern Ireland, The Quiet Man, Northern Ireland, Bushmills, Northern Ireland, Dunvilles, Northern Ireland. And I'm sure there might be one or two other people who have, there was this guy who won a lottery and actually started to build a distillery in Belfast and somehow um, he ran out of money. <laughs> and he actually um, had a Titanic whiskey. He had like three or four different um, bottles on the market uh, by the time he ran out of money. Um, maybe even one of those. So what's your favorite um, Irish whiskey? So I'm gonna have to go for, um, yeah, let's try to pull this down here without killing it. Da da da, Bushmills, twenty one. Ha ha. This is so good. Um, so expensive and yet so good. This is really, really one of the best Irish whiskeys I think. A Northern Ireland or Irish whiskeys I've had in the category of best Irish whiskey. I still think the twenty one year old would win. Um, I've actually just reviewed the Dreamcast, the 32-year-old Red Breast. Um, the 21 is better, in my personal opinion. Whiskey Jason here. Um, so, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, tell others about this crazy American tasting rare and exotic whiskeys over here. Thank you very much. See you Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Whiskey Jason here. Bye-bye.